guys, in this video I wanted to talk about the difference between cheap coloured pencils versus expensive coloured pencils and why I personally choose to use the more expensive coloured pencils in comparison to some cheaper brands that you can buy. So let's get on to the video. So while I talk about the difference between the cheap and the expensive coloured pencils, I'm just going to show you this quick time lapse of a commission that I did not too long ago. And I'm just using coloured pencils on pastel matte paper and blending with the odorless mineral spirits. And I'll leave a link in the description of another piece I did recently of some meerkats just to show you how I use this technique if you are interested. Let me start by saying there is a use for student grade or cheap coloured pencils and I'll talk about that a bit later but I wanted to first start with the reasons why I use the brands that I do. So some of the main ones that I use are the Faber-Castell Polychromos, the Carandash Luminance, Derwent Drawing and Pro Color and Prismacolor. So the first thing is the quality. So basically the more expensive the colored pencil is in general, the more pigment it will contain and less binder, which means that it's easier to lay colors on top of each other because there's not as much of that waxy, oily binder stopping you from adding more layers. The more expensive pencils are aimed at fine art artists, so they're usually really easy to blend in comparison to the really cheap coloured pencils. So blending two colours together or going from dark to light or putting more colours on top of each other is a lot easier when it comes to using the more expensive pencils over using the cheaper one. The way that the pencils are made when they're more expensive is usually a lot better as well. Even brands like Prismacolor have quality control issues where sometimes their leads are not centered so when you go and sharpen them they just break and crumble. But you'll find this a lot more often in the really cheap colored pencils like the Crayola and the Faber-Castell ones that are aimed at kids and students. So it just makes it a little bit harder to work with. You can get really nice looking results and I have seen really nice artwork done with cheap pencils, but the process is a lot harder in my opinion and it's really not as enjoyable. The second reason is the light fast ratings. And this is the main reason that I invest in more expensive colored pencils. So when we talk about light fast ratings, it's basically talking about how long the artwork will last before it starts to fade. So in general, fine art supplies like oil paints have a really high light fast rating and they'll most likely last hundreds of years. Whereas if you use really cheap or student grade suppliers, the light fast ratings generally won't be as high. So there are two scales that most brands use. One is called the blue wall scale and one is called the ASTM. Colored pencil is a relatively new medium in the fine art world meaning that there are an increasing amount of brands trying to create colored pencils that are suitable for artists. But just because they're labeled as such doesn't mean that, that they are suitable for professional artists selling their work. You can make great looking artwork with Derwent Studio pencils or even the Crayola ones aimed at kids, but it will only look good for a few years before it starts to fade. And you can buy fixatives and glass and things like that that are supposed to help with the light fastness but I'd rather not risk it and just use light fast materials in the first place. And you have to be careful with this because some brands will label themselves as being light fast or have great light fast ratings. But when you research or ask for those ratings, they haven't actually done any tests to prove any of that. So my standard of light fast could be completely different to theirs, which is why I use the blue wool and the ASTM scales only. And even amongst the brands that I listed earlier, which are all great quality, there are some colors that are not light fast or are too low rating for me to use personally in my own artwork. So I take those pencils out of my set and don't use them at all. The luminants are all light fast, which is why they are the most expensive. And polychromos are pretty close as well. Whereas only about half of the Prisma colors have the appropriate light fast levels. It's usually the pinks and purples and reds and like really bright colors that are not light fast, but you can check the manufacturer's websites or ratings on the actual pencils themselves and compare them to the charts. So these scales will give you a general idea on how long that color will last before it begins to fade. One of the reasons why some of the colored pencils are so expensive is because they actually use the same pigments as oil paints or acrylic or watercolor. The manufacturers are just binding them in a different way and we apply them in a different way to painting. That's why some colored pencil artists refer to their work as colored pencil paintings rather than drawings because it's in fact the same pigment used in oil paintings. 
So I do a lot of commissions in coloured pencil and they take me a lot longer to do than any other medium that I work in. So it takes me longer than pastels or oils or acrylics or graphite or anything else. So I want to make sure that I'm using light fast materials so that it will last as long as an oil painting does and it warrants me charging the appropriate amount that it takes me to do these pieces. I obviously don't want an unhappy customer in three years time because they paid fine art prices for my work and it faded because I used colored pencils that weren't light fast. So there are a few situations where using non light fast materials is fine and they all pretty much rely on the fact that you aren't selling your original artwork. If you're sketching down any ideas or you're doing artwork in a sketchbook that you're not planning on selling or if you're creating artwork with the intention of taking high quality DSLR images and then selling prints of it rather than actually selling the original artwork. A lot of people create YouTube videos where they show other artists or hobby artists how to create artwork with cheaper suppliers. So this can be really useful if you're just starting out or if you just want to do it for some fun or you're learning a new medium. And again, they're not selling their original artwork. They're just using it as a tool to show other people how to create artwork. A lot of illustrators and graphic designers take photos of their physical artwork and then convert them into digital mediums to sell that way. So again, they're not actually selling their original drawing, they're converting it into a digital medium. Another reason is if you're doing adult coloring books and that's quite popular now, so you can use a lot of the cheaper suppliers for that, that do have that creamy consistency that people like. And if you're a hobby artist and you, you like doing art, but you don't plan on selling your artwork, then of course you don't need to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on premium quality colored pencils for that. And also if you're selling crafts or cards or postcards or things like that, then people don't expect those items to last for 50 years before they fade. And if you are planning on selling artwork that you created with non light fast materials, then you should let your customers know that it may fade in a few years and you should probably charge a lot less for those items than any of the work that you've created with light fast materials. So basically you can create absolutely stunning artwork using cheaper colored pencils and I've seen many YouTubers do this and many people on social media. However, just keep in mind that if you are planning on selling your colored pencil pieces at fine art prices, make sure that you're not disappointing people by using suppliers that will fade in a couple of years. There's some videos on the screen if you wanted to check out any of my other tutorials or click the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any of my videos.